We're going to peace of the Lord. We're going to open our Bibles. The book of Genesis. Genesis 45. We're going to read from verse 16. Genesis 45 from verse 16. Thus says the word of the Lord. Now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brothers have come. So it pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this, load your animals and depart. Go to the land of Canaan. Bring your father and your households and come to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt. And you will eat of the fat of the land. My brethren, we see here the moment of of definition of the people of God. We see the moment in which <coughs> the people of God, the, the Hebrew people, they were living difficult moments, moments in which a great famine very intense famine was taking over the entire region where they lived. And this period here is before for Moses, before the people went to Egypt and lived in Egypt for 400 years. In fact, this moment here was a moment in which was defined, was decided, the, the Jewish people decided to go to Egypt. So the, the, the family of Joseph, it, here it shows the conversation between Pharaoh and Joseph. And we all know that what happened with Joseph. Joseph, quickly, he was the son of Jacob, one of the youngest children of Jacob, the one that was sold by his brothers because of envy. We all know this story very well. And Joseph then he was sold. He ended up living on the land of Pharaoh in Egypt. And the Lord God changed the entire trajectory and all the evil all the bad things that had been done with Joseph, the Lord God was able to change all of it, giving Joseph a, such a great honor that Joseph ended up becoming the governor of Egypt. Jo Joseph grew up so much. God prospered Joseph's, soul life, uh, Joseph's life so much in Egypt that he became the second man of authority in Egypt, just below the Pharaoh. So then the famine came. And Joseph now, warned by God, Joseph fills the silos of Egypt, knowing what was going to take place. The famine arrived, and there was no longer any type of farming in Egypt on the, or on the entire region. And the people needed to go to Egypt in order to purchase food, and supplies, grain, in order to survive. And now here it shows a conversation between Pharaoh and Joseph. I'm, I'm going back a little bit so the brethren can understand the story, so that nobody may lose track of what, what the Lord wants to speak with us tonight, which is very important. The Lord gave a couple of spiritual gifts tonight, and we can never forget of what are the promises of God upon our lives. We can never 
let go of what is the project of God for your life, for our lives, for our families, for our church. So this service is very important because the service it defines everything that you are and everything that you need, everything that you desire, which is to live in heaven. And we can never forget that the Lord God is always above everything. God's projects, God's promises, many times, may take long to happen, or even they take very long to be fulfilled in our lives, but all of them will be fulfilled according to our faith and according to our willingness and our definition of the Lord. And now we see here, after a few years, Joseph in Egypt, now as governor. Now Pharaoh heard that the brothers of Joseph who were in Cana, living with his father Jacob, they had already arrived. And the brothers had, had sold Jacob without knowing of the entire trajectory and everything that happened with Joseph, the brother of Joseph. This is another message, but they come into Egypt seeking for supplies, food. And then Joseph recognizes his brothers, and Joseph is recognized by his brothers. There is a great joy, a great celebration. Something wonderful happened there. The Joseph meeting once again with his brothers. And now Pharaoh proposed to Joseph, Joseph, why don't you call your father, why don't you call your, your brothers to live here in Egypt so that they may enjoy of all this plenty that we have. Oh, give them the best of the land of Egypt. They don't have to stay there going through difficulties in need. When you hear, bring everyone here. And that's exactly what happened. And the word tells us that Joseph, he brings everyone to Egypt, about 700 people. Joseph and his brothers, they come in Egypt and then begin to live in Egypt because of an invitation and a promise, because of something that was given agreement that was made and that now begins to be the main agreement of the family of Joseph with Pharaoh. So then we see everything that took place, everything that the Lord had promised to the people of God through Abraham. And the Lord was causing the entire family of Abraham to be successful, to be blessed, and the Lord was causing them to never, never depend on man, because the Lord was with them. The Lord was the one who was blessing in a great way what God has done to Abraham, took him out of his land and of, out of from within his relatives. And we know that Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was the father of Jacob, and Jacob was father of Joseph. So the promise that the Lord had made to Abraham was now, consequently, was being passed on from generation to generation to children to children. So now we come to the father, it's now coming to Jacob, and now coming into Joseph. So then we see, my brethren, this attempt, we can say, even if, if we look rationally, if we look according to our own understa human understanding, our rational understanding, everything was great. Pharaoh wanted to help Joseph. He was thankful for what Joseph was doing on his kingdom because he was a, a successful person, because of his knowledge, because of his performance as a human being, for everything that he was doing. I could even say, was Pharaoh was trying to please Joseph when he invited his whole family and his relatives to 
to bring them to Egypt and to live there. Now I ask my brethren, was there any other alternative? Was there something that Jacob and his children could have done in order for them not to go to Egypt? Apparently, no. If we look according to the history, no. Because the famine, well, there was a great drought, and the people was dying of hunger. And humanly speaking, appear in a, according to our appearances, that was the best alternative. It was a, a proposal that could not be rejected. And after all, what could they what could they lose? Where could they go? Remaining in this struggle, they're going to Egypt buying stuff, and look, it was a great distance. We don't have, they didn't have the means that we have today of carrying uh, supplies, boats, planes, everything was done on the back of animals. Everything was very difficult. And for how long would they endures this difficulty and going through this situation. So no, so then looking through the human aspect, this was the alternative, the appropriate alternative. This would be the first, we can say, the, their first option is to accept this invitation and move into Egypt. And it was exactly what happened. But now I ask the brethren, they have forgotten something. Is it possible that the Lord, the same God that had blessed Abraham, that has spoken with Abraham and promised Abraham, is it possible that this same God would forsake his people in this difficult moment that they were going through? Is it possible that God was going to close his eyes and abandon people in order for them to and allow them to die? There was a detail that the people had forgotten. The people that I say, Jacob and his family, they forgot about the promise that the Lord had made to Abraham, that the Lord was going to give him the promised land, that the Lord was going to be the provider to them, and that not only Abraham, but the entire descendant, all, all the descendants of Abraham, all of them were going to be blessed by the Lord, and they forgot this promise. The first opportunity, and the first offering from outside, the offering that was made, the first offering was the Lord gave to Abraham, because the Lord was the Lord was honoring the agreement that He had made with Abraham. Now the people forget all of this. They didn't think twice before accepting this proposal from Pharaoh. And as always, my brethren, that's what happens when we, when we make a mistake. Many times today, in our days, in our choices, we forget the promise of God. We forget that the Lord always has always been and always be the provider of our lives. Many times, today in our days, we forget of the Word of God. We forget of what the Lord one day said when He brought you to, into His presence, of the promise that the Lord made to His family, the promise of healing, the promise of eternal life, the promise that the Lord was going to bring peace to His home, that the Lord was going to give to you everything that you needed. And many times you forget. And the first opportunity, the first chance, we forget of what God has spoken to us and we end up falling into the same mistake that the people of God have fallen into. And in the beginning, when we see here, in the beginning, everything was wonderful. Everything was all a sea of roses. The Bible says, when we go back here, we'll see. The Bible describes clearly what the people went through. The people was, was prospering, 70 people, more or less. The, the years passed, and now the people began to prosper. 
everything went well. They they had their own land in Egypt. They would sow, they farm. They had the area that was given to them, the land that was given to them. They would farm and they would harvest. And they would grow with abundance. They would they would not lack anything. So this small number of about 70 people that enter into Egypt. Now, a little later, these people became a, a large nation. We can even say that when they left Egypt, it was more than a million people the Bible describes. I don't know, I don't remember exactly how many people uh, departed from Egypt. It was a lot of people. It was a considerable, considerable number. And interesting that in 400 years, they lived in Egypt. And what could have been an a temporary invitation, a temporary solution to resolve a situation, maybe a couple of months, depending on, on the size of the damage and the famine, the period of drought, who knows, that could have been a temporary solution. But they forgot everything completely. And now, 400 years later, 400 years have passed. And this period, a little before the, their, depart the, their departure from Egypt, the father Jacob had already died. Joseph, the son of Jacob, had already also passed away. The Pharaoh that they had made an invitation for Joseph to bring his family had already passed. A new Pharaoh had already taken on power, and that caused a great difficulty because the agreement had been made. Now, became a great difficulty because Pharaoh, the pharaohs that took took power afterwards, they saw the situation. They saw the Hebrew people growing more and more and becoming, we could say, something that could could have been an impediment, uh, could cause a disagreement amongst them, or, or imagine a threat. Imagine having inside of your own country a foreign people, a foreign nation growing, being blessed, prospering, and that caused a certain jealousy to the pharaohs that uh, succeeded in the government of Egypt, and now this was taking place continually. And now Pharaoh, they begin now to create difficulty to the life of the people in Egypt. They begin to abuse the people and mistreat the nation, the Hebrew nation. Now they begin to cause them to work like uh, slaves, work as slaves, they lost their identity, they lost, they lost everything. They passed on from a, a free people, the people that was living blessed under the hands of the Lord, and now they are enslaved people. The Pharaoh was mistreating them, causing them every day putting more impediment from them, for them from, from prospering and growing. So everything that was a dream, everything that was a project, everything that was something that apparently was being a blessing, now has become, has become what? An illusion. Why is that? Now I ask my brethren, because they forgot the promise of God, the promise that the Lord had made for them in the first place. And so, my brethren, today, in our days, it is the same thing. We don't see many differences, because many who are here today, living under the promise of God, many who are receiving the blessings of God with their families, their homes, serving the Lord, 
numbering their days, eagerly waiting to go to heaven, adding blessings and experiences, people that were serving the Lord in, in the difficult moment, in the moment of difficulty, a moment of famine, they accept the first proposal that is made by the enemy. And you know why it happens? Because they don't see the enemy as a villain. They don't see the world in the same way we see. What is, is out there to steal our blessing, to take our focus, and to bring disagreement and to remove completely our objective, which is to serve the Lord, not only on this life, but serving the Lord eternally in heaven. So many times, the enemy, the world that is out there, is not manifested as a villain. The enemy, many times, it doesn't come, it doesn't present to people, like we have said in the movies, and, and uh, the character with horns and with uh, uh, trident and, and color red. No. Many times he comes in a subtle way. He comes as a friend. He came as a host. He comes and enters into your home as a person that is coming to help. And the same with Pharaoh. He comes with the proposals, with his uh, own reasons and what is the best that the world can offer, the best job many times, the best house, the best mar marriage, a perfect person, perfect, perfect husband, and in men's eye, everything looks perfect, but the, uh, uh, a Christian some, many times for, forget that many times those offerings from the world, this uh, invitations from the world, many times they come to steal our blessing. The objective is exactly this, to exchange what we have of greatest worth, pearl of great worth, what was given to us as an inheritance, what was given to us freely, because a high price was paid on the cross. Many times we exchange it for something that is fleeting. Sometimes it's offered and it's exchanged. No, no, leave Cana behind. Get out from the promised land. Come here because we're going to give you here the best of the land I can offer. You're going to eat of everything that, of that the land can offer. And that's what happened. Many times people, they are in the church, they are serving the Lord. But in the first, the first opportunity, they forget of all the promises of the Lord and accept, they accept the invitation. Something that many times, oh, he's a perfect marriage. Hey, wait a minute. He's your boyfriend or your husband. He's not from church. He doesn't serve the Lord. Oh, but no, no, that's not a problem. I'm going to cause him to accept the Lord. I'm going to preach for him. I'm going to testify to him. And many times, that's what happened. The youth, many times, they don't wait for the right moment. They go out in the world. Not with the objective to evangelize, but with the desire to bring for, for them a solution to a problem that they are going through. Many times people, they fall because of this difficulty. And many times, this is the offering of the world. They, those are the pleasures of the world. They come to obf obfuscate our vision a vision of eternity. So, in the beginning, in the beginning, it may, may be good. Many times, we have a new experience, something new, a great opportunity. And that's what happened many times. The youth, and many times, a person is married, married or a, a sister or brother, they come, they come into difficulty. They enter into a certain situation. They seek for situations and they enter into situations that many times have no way back. And they are like the slaves that live there. The people have become slaves. They lost their identity. They lost their origin. They lost everything. And many people here, they are, they are slaved. They are slaved on sin. Enslaved because of the world, 
under the yoke of the enemy. But then we can ask, wasn't this proposal so good? Wasn't it, uh, wasn't it supposed to be a, a great offering, the best job that could have been offered to me? Uh, apparently, it, it looked great. Yes, but then after time passes, after you lose your blessing, after you cancel the, the Lord speaking to you and the promise of the Lord, then the trial comes, then the difficulty comes, then comes your reality. Then you will be able to understand clearly what was the reason of the enemy to steal your blessing. How he has done in a subtle way to confuse you, to and you went in, into a path that had no way back. So then, how, where is that wonderful marriage? Where is that wonderful car or wonderful job? Where are the things that in the beginning, according to human eyes, they were a dream, they were the answer for everything that you needed, but now everything falls to the ground. The, the, the joy passes, Peace passes, self-esteem is no longer there, everything vanishes, and now desperation comes. And now slavery enters, and where you become attached, tied up to, things, to the things of the world. My brethren, that's why the Lord has shown a couple of spiritual gifts, gifts that we need to take into consideration. We need to be paying attention to the proposals of what is being offered to us. We remember that we belong to the Lord. We have a call. We one day have been taken out of the world. The Lord has a promise upon your life. The Lord has made a promise to you that you, was, you were receiving salvation from the Lord. Today we have us a right we have a right for eternity with Jesus. This is our right. We do not belong to this world. We have our identity. We have a father. We have a home. We have a, a safe harbor to go. We know where we're going to. We have a call of the Lord to live eternally in heaven with the Lord. We have a land where it flows honey and milk. We need to be careful with that. We cannot do it in the same way as Israel did, like Hebrew did. We cannot exchange what has been given to us, which is this opportunity, this unique opportunity of salvation in Jesus. The word says that there are ways that according to men's eyes, they seem good, but their end, their end will lead to death. That's why tonight the Lord wants to give us an alert so that we need to be careful so that we may never let go what, it, what has been the blessing of the Lord, a promise of the Lord for our lives. This is the message, not a message that we're here. We're not correcting anyone or uh, causing fear on anyone. That's not the objective of this message. This message has the, the only objective of this message is the following. Don't let go of your blessing. Don't let go of your promise. Don't let go of what the Lord one day gave to you freely because a high price was paid for it. And we need to give great worth to the promise of the Lord for our lives. What is fleeting will pass. Um, but what is eternal? We are already receiving Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So here is this message from the part of the Lord for us. And so we'll let us sing a song, and afterwards we're going to share spiritual gifts that the Lord has given to us, gifts that speak to our heart, and that this world, this service tonight, may be for us as a, a guide so that you may make a definition in the presence of the Lord, and that you may say, be able to say no completely to the offerings of the enemy, the offerings of the world, 
and that you may give worth to what the Lord has spoken to us. May the Lord bless us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A brother sent here a uh, collaboration. He, he was saying that two million of people departed from Egypt, outside from the animal children. The animals, livestock was a great multitude just to help out on the message. So now let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord God, we glorify you, Lord, because you are wonderful. You are the one who sustained the people in Egypt, and you have sustained our lives here in this place. But we know, Lord, that you have done great things for us, Lord. Great things you are doing for us. Many others you will do. And you have placed in our hearts the hope for eternity. Because there, there will be no trial. There is going, not going to be difficulty. We're going to, at the, to be at the feet of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why we glorify the Lord yet again for another word, another night in His presence. Because you are wonderful. You are marvelous consort, prince, king of peace, our consular, our savior. We glorify the Lord and praise you for this word in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I read one of the gifts that the Lord was giving for the service was that a woman that is watching the service, she has received many offerings. Many things have been placed in her life and have been offered to her. But it is interesting that 
it came to her heart even the desire to exchange what the Lord the promise of the Lord in her life for things of this life. But the Holy Spirit has testified that those things do not belong the Lord to the Lord. So you need to analyze everything because there, there is a great harm that may happen if you exchange your blessing, what the Lord is giving you for things of this world, you will end up in a bad situation. But it is interesting that the Lord is testifying, is, is creating a discomfort in her heart, and she's not going to let go of the blessing of the Lord for her life. But glory to God. Very good. The Lord also has shown a, a family that a while ago they had abandoned the project of salvation in Jesus, the entire family. But tonight the Lord has brought a new invitation. The Lord is giving to them a new opportunity for them to go back into the presence of the Lord. Amen. So here are these two gifts from the part of the Lord. And there's another gift also saying that we should not have as base our faith, base our evangelical experience on anything that is fleeting because the Lord has for us the word of the Lord is everything for us the doctrine is solid the promises of the Lord they remain the Lord never changed don't allow yourself to be carried away with invitations and conversation from group A, B and C and leadership Look, your experience with the Lord Jesus, your experience needs to be only with the Lord Jesus. Amen? So seek from the Lord. Seek the Lord and don't let go of what the Lord has spoken to you. So let's pray, bring this after a close. And soon after the prayer, we're going to be greeting one another. And if anyone needs an assistance, a clarification regarding the gifts that have been given tonight regarding the word. So everything that we are here, we're here to help you so that you may not lose the blessing of the Lord and He has reserved for us. Let's close our eyes. Lord God, we want at this moment, once again, glorify your name. And to ask, Lord, that you may continue speaking to your hearts, removing, Lord, any doubt, questioning, placing the faith, the true faith, the only faith that came from eternity that is able to reach our hearts and that causes us to go back to eternity. Lord, we ask that this service may serve as a moment of definition, a moment in which the people may see clearly the project of salvation in Jesus which is our only choice. We should not have options and alternatives, ways that are contrary and different paths, but that we may be, Lord, completely walking the path with Jesus. Receive our glorification. Receive, Lord, our praise to you. The prayer that we say to you, are really thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, sweet and tender, consolation of the Holy Spirit, be poured out upon all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Remember, brethren, let's open the microphone, and uh, I wish everyone the peace of the Lord. Oi, Nildo. Ei, alguém chamou? Eu. Oi, Nildo. Oi, Nildo, eu tomei a vacina de Covid hoje. Eu queria oração, porque eu estou sentindo dor no meu braço. É, tá bom. Vamos orar, tá? Eu estou com dor de cabeça. Pode até não ser dor de cabeça com isso, entendeu? Tá. Mas não custa nada. Tá bom. Bom, daqui a pouco. De deixa só, só o pessoal aqui despedir, que aí a gente ora com você, tá bom, Lígia? Tá bom. Um minuto. Ah.
A boa noite. Paz do Senhor, pastor. Paz do Senhor. 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 Paz do Sen